Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. September the 1st to October the 4th is set aside each year in our church as the season of creation. Today is the annual World Day of Prayer for the care of creation. And Pope Francis says that it offers to individual believers and to the community a pr precious opportunity to renew our personal participation in this vocation as custodians of creation, raising to God our thanks for the marvelous works that God has entrusted to our care, invoking God's help for the protection of creation and God's mercy for the sins committed against the world in which we live. Thank you for your presence here at our Mass, and we welcome you all visitors. Please be generous in contributing financially to our parish, as we depend on your generosity to keep this parish operating. There are collection boxes and tap machines available for you in the church. At this time, I ask that you please silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and our entrance hymn is 531, For the Beauty of the Earth, 531. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Special welcome to all visitors and those who are returning to us from away, and thank you for your presence here today. As we contemplate day today the World Day of Prayer for creation, beginning the season of creation in our church, we ask the Lord to come to forgive us for the times we have uh, failed to respect our earth, our common home. We have polluted the environment for the times that we have not lived up to our responsibility to care for the earth. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. Thank you. 
Christe eleison, Christe eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, alone are the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Now Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it. But keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other nations? has a God so near to it, as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him. And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord.
Psalm 15 can be found at number 93 in the white booklet in your pew. The response is, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? A reading from the second letter of James. Every gracious act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Welcome with meekness, the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. A religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this. To care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unsustained by the word. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Father gave us birth by the word of truth, that we would become first fruits of his creation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them according to the law. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And do not, they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human traditions. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile them. But the things that come out of a person are what defile them. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading today, Moses urged the people of Israel to be faithful to God's law without adding to it or subtracting from it. The Jewish law was not to be a burden to be endured, but a source of life and wisdom for the people. But over the years, we know what humans do, but over the years, since Moses, many things were added to the original law. The Ten Commandments became 613, you know. The Jewish leaders over the years added their own human traditions to the law, which had now expanded and making very burdensome daily requirements that were authoritative and binding just like the law. They made them as commandments, but they were more human traditions than commandments from God, the Word of God. So Jesus was trying to, you know, do away with that. So Jesus understood himself as sent by God to renew his Jewish faith. While he respected his Jewish tradition, which he inherited, he wanted to reshape it so that he became, came to express more fully God's purpose for the Jewish people and for all humanity. This mission to renew and reshape the Jewish tradition brought him into conflict, of course, with those who don't want change, who wanted to maintain it at all cost a tradition as it was at the time. So Jesus accuses the religious leaders of his day for giving more importance to various human religious tr practices and traditions than to the word of God. They were more concerned with tradition relating to food and cleanliness and all that, which were important, but they had neglected the more fundamental values in God's eyes, which are mercy and justice and love. Most of their rules separated people, not bringing them together. So Jesus challenged the religious authorities to pay less attention to externals of the religion and more about what was in the human heart and to the actions that flow from in the human heart. In a certain sense, Jesus was calling on them to get back to the basics of their Jewish faith as found in the message of the prophet Isaiah where Jesus quotes Isaiah saying, I quote, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. As Jesus says, you abandon the commandment of God and hold on to human traditions. Or Jesus is saying to them what was more important to them was not so important to God. The central question when it comes to our relationship with God is, what does God want from me? What does God want? Jesus came among us to show us what God wants for our lives, really. He suggests that what really matters to God is what is in our hearts, our inner core. 
In spite of the fine sounding words that come from the lips of the religious leaders in prayer, their hearts are not in the right place. They don't practice what they preach, really. Then religious leaders in the gospel reading were more concerned with the tradition. They criticized Jesus' disciples for not following the traditions, observing the ritual washing of hands and all that, which are important in themselves, but they cause division in the community. Jesus could see that for all their concern about the religious traditions, they were so occupied with the externals that they had no internal self. Their souls were neglected. The physical wasn't, but the souls were. They did not allow God to live in their hearts. They had forgotten mercy. They forgot compassion and love of their neighbor. St. James in the second reading makes it very clear. What is true religion, he says? True religion is that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for the orphans and widows and to keep oneself unstained by the world. In other words, James says, faith without good works is dead and good works without faith are empty. He says that in his letter. The worship of the scribes and Pharisees was an empty show because they did in, what they did in worship that it did not impact or change their behavior the rest of their daily lives. It says in James, we are to be doers of the word, not mere hearers. And Jesus is saying that what God really wants is a heart that is open to receive God's abundant love and to share that love in compassion and mercy upon others. When Jesus asked what is the greatest commandment in the law, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and strength, but also to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus came not to show us what God wants, not just to show us what God wants, but to empower us to become what God wants. Through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus poured the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God's love, into our hearts so as to create in us hearts that reflect the loving heart of God, hearts that are a source of a loving way of life. A loving heart and the life that flows from a loving heart comes to us from God through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. If we can keep the fire of the Holy Spirit's love burning in our hearts, then we will be lovingly attentive to the needy, to the poor and the homeless, the most vulnerable among us, this is certainly what God wants. That is what a sincere heart is about. We cannot make the practice of our religion become like the Pharisees, merely an external lip service observance. A bundle of pious practices and rituals, heartless and without love. We cannot be mere spectators at our masses each Sunday and then it has no effect on our behavior during the rest of the week. We have to live, practice what we preach. We have to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give drink to the thirsty, visit the sick, welcome the stranger, all of those corporal works of mercy every day. They've got to be a part of it. Receiving the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion means that we strive to become more Christ-like in our daily lives, to be, more than, to be more than Sunday Christians. The love of God must flow into our daily lives and into our families and into our workplaces. Let us stand now and profess our faith. We pray the Apostles' Creed, and you can find that in the little red book in your pew if you don't remember the words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now and trust in our Heavenly Father to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts today. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, 
and the success of his apostolic visit this week to Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Timor, and Singapore. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray on this Labor Day weekend for meaningful work for all people and for safe and equitable work environments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in the season of creation that the world may overcome the selfishness, greed, neglect, and abuse that has caused the climate crisis, the loss of biodiversity, and resulting human suffering, so that a spirit of hope and justice will live in the hearts of all people, so, and all may respect and care for the earth, our common home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers and students who begin a new school year, that God may bless them with success. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may realize that Christ's presence in the Eucharist is a daily call for you to share Jesus with the poor, the homeless, refugees, and the hungry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in all areas of conflict in our world, especially Israel, Gaza, and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and for all wounded in body, mind, and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, for the recently deceased, for Harold and Barbara Mason, Paul Taylor, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray in the quiet of your hearts for your intentions today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Our offertory hymn is You Are Near, 487 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through your word and your spirit, you called all things into being that your love might be reflected in the vastness of the universe, in the bounty of land and sea, and in the diversity of people who bear your image. Yet your gifts of nature did not exhaust your goodness, for the fullness of your love was only revealed when you sent your only begotten Son for our salvation and poured out your Spirit to gather us into one as your own. And therefore, with the great company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, the people of God, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy and your faithful people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptized children of God in the family of God, we pray now in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the people of God, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ with one another. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that, that you receive, side sections come to receive Holy Communion first. We encourage you to sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. And if you are unable to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Our communion hymn is 600 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Our Daily Bread, 600. Father, 
merciful and gracious, give us now our daily bread. You alone, O oh Lord, sustain us. By you alone are we fed. See us gathered here before you, the daughters and the sons of a new and lasting covenant, confirmed in truth and in love. Father, merciful and gracious, give us now our daily bread. You Sustain us by you alone are we fed. Come fulfill the ancient promise and give us now your son who will be a new and living bread, a lasting sign of your love. Merciful and gracious, give us now our daily bread. You alone, O oh Lord, sustain us. By you alone are we fed. He shall be for us salvation. His body and his blood heal the wounds of all our faithfulness and raise us up to new life. Father, merciful and gracious, give us now our daily Sustain us, by you alone are we fed. Oh, how blessed are those invited to share the bread and cup at this banquet of eternal life, to share the life of your soul. Merciful and gracious, give us now our daily bread. You alone, O oh Lord, sustain us. By you alone are we fed. Father, merciful.
I just highlighted a couple of things from the bulletin. I appreciate your patience. Sacramental preparation for those young people, parents who would like to have their children um, prepare for the sacraments of uh, First Confession, for reconciliation as we call it, First Eucharist or First Communion, and also confirmation this year. There are forms available on the sides of the, of the doors for you to register, or you can call the parish, pick up a bulletin, and get the information to get your children registered for the sacramental preparation program. For adults, the right, RCIA, uh, we have a good number of people, about 11 or 12 already, signed up for, uh, in, for the adult initiation. So you can see the, connect, the contact information there as well. Next Saturday, which is the first Saturday of the month, we will have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament Confessions from 7 to 9 next Saturday night, as per usual for the first Saturday of the month. And next Saturday, September 7, the Walk for Life and the Family Fun Day at Divine Mercy Parish. The information is also there in your bulletin. Thank you for your support of our school supply project for family needy families in our parish and in our, in our city so thank you in advance for your contributions to our outreach project there good. and a special good wishes to all of our teachers and all of our students who begin a new school year this week may god bless you and have you have a successful and prosperous school year Please stand now and let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is Let All Things Now Living, 534 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving to God our Creator triumphantly raise, who fashioned and made us, protected, sustained us by guiding us on to the end of our days. God's o'er o'er us pure light goes before us a pillar of fire shining forth in the night till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished as forward we travel from light into light God's law still the stars in their courses, the sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the depths of the ocean proclaim God divine. We too should be voicing rejoicing with glad adoration a song 